Okay, straight up, first and foremost, here's what you need to know. This is going to be one of the most powerful videos I have ever made. Okay, when it comes to attraction, when it comes to, you know, male to female dyna dynamic, when it comes to you expressing the right character traits and the right things that is going to be needed to command attraction. Okay, this is going to be like the seven biggest principles that I have discovered as a man. Okay, and the reason why I personally believe that you need these is because if you have these three things are going to happen. The first is your relationships are going to get a heck of a lot smoother. Okay, that's number one. Number two, you're going to notice less tests, less pullbacks, and ultimately just better behavior out of the people that you're dating. And then number three, you're going to have something that's lasting. Okay, so for a lot of you who are actually playing, you know, the dating game and you want to see yourself succeed, you're going to have to copy these seven traits and characteristics and how you see the world. Okay, this goes even deeper than just quote unquote game. Okay, how you see the world matters and dictates the success that you have as a masculine man. So we're going to be breaking down the seven key attraction triggers in order to hook right the companions that you want and ultimately attract them. Now, real quick, I have to do this because I'm like Santa Claus. I put together a cool couple little bundle offers down below. Okay, I'm only running this from now until the end of like the last day of Christmas or like, yeah, 25th, 26th somewhere around there okay so you want to get these they're not open to very many people super exclusive and some of the coolest things i've ever put together is right down below nevertheless okay these seven things i want you to apply stay with me until the end because the seventh is practically a bonus and i 100 percent want you to hear all of these so i can help maximize your success so number one okay what does a guy need to have the right attraction trigger? Well, the first is you need purpose or mission in life. You've heard me say this on the channel a million times, but I'm going to break down this concept at an even deeper level, okay? This is a must, okay? Because your work needs a compounding effect and it changes the way you look at life. See, here's what happens when you're living your life or you're living your career or you're living your work through like a mission or through a purpose is it puts you out of the day to day. Okay. It puts you out of the day to day and you start to become a visionary. You look to the future. Okay. In order to look to the future as a man, it requires you to probably be building something. Okay. If you're building something, it has a compounding effect, meaning year one. Okay. It might not be that good, but year two is probably better than year one. Year three is twice as good as year one. By year four, it might be 10x better than year one. When you live your life with a mission, you're on a mission to do something, you're living life with purpose, you're living life with intent, it makes it very hard not to become wealthy. It makes it very hard not to actually have status in the occupation or the thing that you're doing. And it makes it very, very hard not to have fulfillment. Those are three things that 99% of men are missing, okay? would be their wealth long-term, their status, and their mission. They don't have that. They're not long-term focused. They're in the day-to-day -day grind. It's either the nine-to-five grind, they clock in, they clock out. All they're focused on is that day. When you place yourself out of that and you look to the future, you become a visionary. Now you can start molding, shifting, and shaping the world to how you want it to be in your domain of expertise. That is so powerful. When a woman sees that, I can't tell you, like she oftentimes can't even put it into words, but she's going to look at him and she's going to go, he's different, right? He thinks different. He operates different. He's different than the other guys at the bar that I meet. He's di like, this is what happens, Okay. 100% this is what happens, especially as you get older, you're going to have to have these things dialed in. Okay, that's number one. Number two, the second thing you need is you need goals that you hit, not just talk about. See, this is the mistake that a lot of guys have is they will consistently talk about their goals as if they're trying to impress the girl or as if they're trying to impress other people around them. But here's the thing. Goals don't make you special. Anybody can have a goal. I can say I want to break the, the world record for the 100-meter uh, dash, but you know what? Until I go beat Usain Bolt's record, I'm probably not going to do it. So here's the thing. When you have goals that you either keep to yourself or maybe even you share them lightly, but the women who are around you constantly repetitively see successes, okay, and here's the cool thing about that is it, it doesn't really matter how long it takes. It might take a month for you to hit it. It might take a year. It might take two years. I don't care. 
when they just see that you chip away every day and you don't give up, you have this resilient mindset, it makes it very hard not to set up a life for yourself that any any woman would naturally want to come into, okay? This is more pertaining to back-end, okay? You've heard me talk about front-end versus back-end game, okay, when it comes to your dating life. This These topics are going to be more back-end focused, but the power in this is that this will even copy into the charisma in in the front end of your game as well, and you'll see at the end of this video, just stick with me. You have to hit your goals. When women see you can hit goals, you look strong, you look powerful, you look competent, they like that, okay? Go after what it is that you want in this world and do not stop until you get it. That's number two. Okay, number three, here's what you need. Every man needs this right now. I want you to comment the word below fearless. Okay, right now I want you to take action. I want you to put this into existence. I want you to go and comment the word fearless right below this video. Okay, comment the word fearless and here's why. Number three, you must have a fearless mentality. Like fearless. It serves you no purpose to be weak. It serves you no purpose to be a coward. It serves you no purpose to be scared of anything. So I will constantly tell myself these things through the day. Like some might call me psycho. You might call me psychotic. I don't really care. I don't really care at all. I'm going to tell you this straight up. I will constantly tell my things through the day. Like I am tough. I'm scared of nothing, right? I am fearless. I take risks. Nothing can hurt me. I take risks. Even if it's scary, I will win. I tell myself this, right? And here's the funny thing is it typically doesn't backfire. Like, I don't care if it's a business goal I'm talking about. I don't care if it's a social interaction. Like I tell myself, I am strong. I am powerful. I will take risks. I will succeed. It serves you no purpose or no merit to sit there and go, I have social anxiety, I'm a coward. Like, what does that do? Speaks into existence the opposite shit that you don't want? Like, think about this for a second. Most guys sell themselves short with their own words. Start brainwashing yourself to believe that you are the thing that you want to be. Like, you have to do that. You you have to 100% do that. You have to brainwash yourself to believe that you are what you want to be. How else do you expect to achieve anything? Here's the funniest thing about this. The older I get, the more successful people I meet, the more, you know, slightly famous I, I meet people if they're, you know, slightly famous on YouTube or I've met slightly famous people on Instagram. Every single person that you look up to at the highest degree it was typically always bred off of insecurity or it was bred off of, you know, not feeling enough in a certain topic. Okay. Let that fuel you. When you get to the top in something, people can't tell what gave you that drive to build it. And that's the cool thing is they don't know. It's just like if you approach 20 girls and they all say, no, I don't want to give you my phone number. The 21st girl has no idea that you failed 20 times. People don't know your past. Let that be a motivating factor. So tell yourself consistently, I am strong. I am powerful. I'm fearless. I'm scared of nothing. I will take risks. Nobody can hurt me. Nothing can hurt me. I am tough. I'm a powerful person. Tell yourself that, right? Copy that into the gym when you're hitting a new PR. Copy that into anything. Like tell yourself you have to get tough. There's no merit in being weak. And being strong starts up here, right here, right in the head. If you tell yourself you're weak up here, you will be weak physically. You must be strong. Okay, that's number three. Number four, you have to trigger emotions in the women that you're with. And I'm going to tell you how to do this. When you trigger emotions, you're at the cause, not the effect. Let's break this down step by step. When most guys hear, oh, trigger emotions with the girl, what they think that that means is they think that that means be very emotional. So what happens then is men turn into these overly romantic buttercups. It's not attractive right? They look too pleasing. They look too nice. The girl gets turned off and it's because they are now at the effect of their own emotions. Instead, you want to be at the cause of her emotions. Say that again, cause of her emotions, not at the effect of my own emotions. So to trigger emotions in people, oftentimes what you have to do is you have to speak very confidently. You have to be concise with what you say and you have to create experiences right? That impact that other person. So when you trigger emotions into a woman, you see, she starts to build this narrative around you. The narrative around you is very, very powerful to a woman. She's like, oh, this was our first date. This was how we met, right? We we met organically. We just ran into each other as friends, right? She starts painting this picture of you. She starts painting this picture of you. She'll start to, and, and if you're a good guy, right? Like you're cool to be around. You're smooth. You're not a loser. You have cool stuff going on 
you have a cool life. She's going to start to paint this picture how like this was meant to be or this was supposed to happen or she's going to paint this picture how the stars just aligned and we naturally just clicked. All of this all of this stuff, okay? It's because you are at the cause of the emotions, not at the effect. You have to trigger these. I recommend triggering these in as many people as you can. If you can be a source of other people's pleasure, of other people's good vibes and good feelings when they're around you, very rarely will they want to exit. So I try to practice this with myself no matter who I'm around. Be a source of value. Okay, if you be a source of value, you make the other person feel good, right? If I'm talking with a, a, a guy that I'm best friends with, okay, I might be helping him in his business. I might be giving him specific uh, pointers. I'm doing this just out of the genuine kindness of my heart. There's no money involved, nothing. I'm Seriously, I'll take an hour sometimes and just help another person. By the end of it, there goes, wow, you helped me so much. I'm like, I know, okay, but they like that. You conveyed value as a source of pleasure to them. If you're with your girlfriend, okay, you are creating experiences or you're, you're strong and you're confident in who you are. You heighten her emotional state when she's around you. You become a source of pleasure. She doesn't want to leave. Okay, so you have to trigger emotions in people. Oftentimes, this even comes from you being one to two steps removed of your own emotions so you can make sure you're at the cause of other people's. I know that this sounds crazy, but this stuff works. And since it works, I would rather just give you the truth instead of beat around the bush and tell you a bunch of crap that doesn't. So this is from my own lived experience. This is from me going on dates. This is from me being with women. This is from me having girlfriends over the years. Like this is from me actually being live and in the field. I have tested all of this. It, this is not some crap I read in a book. I don't care how many books you read on how to read a bicycle. Until you get on the bicycle, you're not going to be able to ride it. That's just fact. Okay, number five. The fifth most powerful masculine attraction trigger. You have to be competent and convey masculine value. So when a woman sees that a man has this mindset that I like to call, I got it. If the guy, you as the guy, I want you just to say this to yourself. Say, I got it. Uh, don't worry about that. I got it. You, you start taking care of stuff, right? Like you're the leader. You take care of stuff. So I'll give you an example. If you go out on a date, right? And they did something stupid, something petty, something so cheap. You spit 20, 20 bucks on appetizers or something. And you just like automatically grab your card, you swipe the bill, right? You're the man, you're like the leader, you're the masculine, like, aka, like, <laughs> protect, provide, just basic biology, like basic instincts that like men should do. If you know not to put on this song and pony dance, where you got to talk for five minutes about, oh, should we split it? Should we not split it? Is it your turn? You look stupid, kind of. If she sees like, oh, he's got it. If you had, if you tell yourself, I got it. Don't worry about that. You know what you should be doing as a guy. That is called masculine competence. If shit hits the fan at home, right? You got it, right? If, if stuff hits the fan in your business, you got it. So if, like, if you pop a flat tire on the road, you got it. Okay. You get what I'm saying? When you convey masculine value and you show that you understand specifically how to get out of situations or how to do the right thing in situations that a guy naturally should just do she looks at him and she goes oh he just gets it he gets it he knows what to do i don't have to tell him that's one of the most unattractive things is when a woman has to tell a guy how to be manly in the right areas how to be masculine in the right areas it makes her cringe and it, it makes her like really, really close off from you. It makes her definitely not want to sleep with you because it shows that your genes are not smart and that you're not the byproduct of what a successful guy would be. Naturally, she would just look at the guy who is successful and go, oh, he just gets it. He just knows. I don't have to tell him. That's extremely sexy to a woman. So please, please, please don't take this as me coming down on you. Just take these tips and start to apply them. Number six, have resources and are well connected. Okay, if you have resources, and a lot of you guys, here, here's the funny thing. A lot of people get bitter about this. Women will oftentimes sleep with guys that they have no uh, connection with. Uh, even it, like if the, She's like, well, I, I'll, I slept with him, but I have no feelings for him. Well, okay. Okay, cool. That might be. But here's the thing. There's plenty of guys out there, myself included in my younger years, where everybody categorizes people differently depending on circumstances of how you meet, right? There's going to be times where women categorize you as just the, the quick alpha to have a good one nighter with in the sheets. And then a different girl is going to categorize you as like maybe based off how you met and how your interaction went. Maybe now she looks at you and she goes, Oh, this is a guy I would consider like talking to maybe long-term. 
you can't control everything. Just like if, if I categorize a girl for like, oh my God, there's one night, like this would be prime for me and her. A different guy might look at her and go, man, that's girlfriend material. That's wife material. Like you can't, you can't control these things. Okay. So what is this point? This point that I'm trying to make of having resources that are well-connected. So many guys are so scared to like admit the fact that traits on the back end, like purpose or having money or having resources is a bad thing, right? They're scared to admit that because they're scared to provide for like a girl or they're scared to show this because they don't want to be taken advantage of or be classified as the provider role. Here's the thing. In my experience, after seeing this, the older a guy gets, the more women naturally just expect that you have something going for yourself. The more they'll start to just naturally expect that you have resources. So when you stop making this all about, oh, how quickly do I get to sleep with the other person? What's she viewing me as? When you when you don't care and you just let the interaction play out, you're going to know, like, let go. You can't control these things. That's one of my favorite parts. My, one of my favorite movies, Fight Club, if you watch him and he goes, just let go. Right when he's about to crash the car, you can't. You got to release control of some of this stuff. You got to be who you are. You got to take your God-given traits you were blessed with. You got to let go. If you can just let go, let the chips fall where they may. You're going to see that your inter interactions play out better. Sometimes it might lead to sleeping with a girl quickly. Sometimes it might not. But who cares? That's not the point. The point is, is how well can you make these sort of connections that will lead to some sort of good relationship cohesion between you and the girl at some point. So stop making this so forceful about, oh, I have to make this interaction perfect. Screw all that. You don't have to make any of that perfect. Nevertheless, so let's get on to this. Number six, you have to have resources. If your work's compounding, if your mission is compounding, if the things you're doing as a man is playing out, 100% she's expecting you to have successes. And truthfully, I hope you expect your own self to have successes too. I hope you get all of the things that you wanted in this world. Material possessions aren't going to make you happy, but guess what? It's a lot better to have them and to have stuff to do than to not. So be okay with that. Be okay with working 60 hours a week for a short period of time. Be okay with working 70 hours a week. Get successful is what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, number seven. This is the most powerful. I told you to stick around until this for the bonus. The seventh most powerful trait, okay? The best masculine attraction trigger is this. You have to be stoic when everybody else would naturally crumble. This is going to be a hard, bitter truth for a lot of you, but a lot of people, okay, let their emotions dictate the response that they give in the world. They, they let their emotions dictate their responses to people. This is very bad. So I noticed something, okay? When I was younger and I'd go to funerals, okay, I would watch how people's like physiological response to pain or to death would manifest in them crying or completely being hysterical and losing their shit. But the problem with that is that whether they decided to do that and they called that grieving or not, that other person still passed away. It didn't change anything. Right. And some, a lot, a lot. And I'm not, I'm not, here's the thing. This, this point might be controversial. I don't care. I took a look at this and I'm like, this isn't good because you can't change the past. You can't change this. And you're willing to completely emotionally let go and just lose control. This isn't good. So I told myself, I, I, I and I used to be that person until I caught this, until I caught this, I, I, I caught this and I looked at this and I said, okay, this isn't good because you can still feel the pain of a, losing a loved one. You can still, you can still wish they were there. But you can also control your physiological response if you are going to let yourself completely turn into an emotional wreck and crumble or not. So I told myself, I'm like, you know what? I'm not the type of person who needs to cry at funerals. I told myself that. And you know what? All of a sudden, I didn't. Now, it's not because I'm weird. It's not because I'm crazy. And it's not because I also don't feel anything. I do feel something for that person. I feel something for the people around me, but I can control my response. So when everybody else is crumbling, right, I'm the person somebody could go to, right, for stability. You want that as a man. You need to be like a pillar or a rock or somebody who is stable that other people can depend on, right? I still felt the pain just as much as they did. The difference is I told myself, I'm not going to let myself turn into a wreck for this day, this week, this month, or some people are to let themselves completely go and they turn into a wreck for a year just because their emotional state's been altered. That is not good. Okay. You want to have control over these areas in your life. The quicker you can control these areas in your life, the more solid you're going to be as a man all the way around. 
So I really hope that you like these seven points. I really hope that you check out some of the Christmas offers that I put together for you. Guys, seriously, I've I've had so many testimonials with the things that I've been doing. Like we've worked now inside of my company. Like we've had thousands of men that we've worked with. We've seen guys transform their dating life a lot of times in under 30 days. We've watched them get the girlfriend of their dreams. Like this stuff works. And since I know this stuff works and it's truly my life's work, I want to give it to you at a time where it's easy to come in at and it makes sense for you and it's actually like the holidays and supposed to be the time of giving and this is the least I could do for you. So hit the like button, guys. Comment and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.